What's up guys, it's Alex here, your friendly reef dog. And today I'm gonna to tell you why I've just downsized my skimmer. Now, if you've seen my tank updates before, you will know that I have raved about my huge NIOS Quantum 220 skimmer, which is rated for tanks up to 2000 liters. And my tank is around 400 liters after displacement. But now I've gone for a Deltec skimmer that is rated for tanks between 200 and 600 liters. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you all of the reasons I've done that. Now, if it's your first time at the channel, I put out a video every week with tips on how to set up and maintain an awesome reef tank. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Right, let's take a look. First up, a little background. This is my tank. It's a Red Sea Reefer Peninsula 500. My best guess is that it holds around 400 litres of water, which is 105 US gallons. And the skimmer I bought at the start was a NIOS Quantum 220 that's rated for tanks between 500 and 2000 litres, or 130 to 520 US gallons. I have 26 fish, most of which are fairly low waste, with the exception of my purple tang and one spot fox face. And I feed between two and four cubes of frozen food per day, plus two or three small helpings of pellet food. Now, BRS TV have done a ton of videos on skimmer size recently, and what they say certainly influenced me, but there were other considerations for me too. There are five main reasons I downsized, so let's start with space. Although this may seem blindingly obvious, there's more to it than you might think. Obviously I checked the skimmer would fit in my sump before I bought it, but that's not the only consideration. Firstly, the water level in the skimmer section of my Red Sea V3 sump is 29cm, but the recommended water level for the NIOS 220 is 21cm, so you need to raise the skimmer by 8cm or about 3 inches. And that means you lose 3 inches of space above the skimmer, and I don't mind telling you I can ill afford to lose 3 inches. The net effect of having such a tall skimmer is that sump access becomes quite awkward. And away from precious cabinet space, raising the skimmer to the required height is easier said than done. I first tried making a stand from egg crate, but that effectively bypassed the rubber feet and made the skimmer noisy. Then I found a pond media basket that just about did the job, but its platform was too small, so the skimmer's feet were still bypassed. Eventually, I found a proper adjustable skimmer stand with a platform just about big enough to accommodate the rubber feet, but it was a marginal fit which made it easy to knock the skimmer off, so I always liked the idea of having a skimmer with a smaller footprint. And that segues into the other issue with space. While the skimmer did fit in my sump, it was too big to turn around, and it took up so much space that I couldn't even fit a phosphate reactor next to it. Over time, my phosphate levels have slowly crept up and hit 0.37 recently. At first I convinced myself that high phosphate wasn't a problem, given how well my aquapora corals were doing. But when I finally woke up to the fact that my corals would look and grow better with lower phosphate, I discovered I had no space for a phosphate reactor because of my enormous skimmer. And that's not all in terms of issues with size. Because of the size of the skimmer body, it holds so much water that it used to mess with my auto top off when I turned it back on after I turned it off for maintenance. And because my auto top off shuts itself off if it pumps water for too long, that used to happen quite a lot, so I'd have to reset it. So I found there were lots of considerations on the physical mass of an oversized skimmer that I hadn't realised at first. And that was reason enough to get a smaller skimmer, but it also leads on to the next reason, performance. And this is what BRS TV have been talking about a lot in recent years. Historically, most of us have chosen to oversize skimmers, usually by about double. So for a 100 gallon tank, you'd get a 200 gallon skimmer. But BRS is effectively saying that most manufacturers are more accurate with their estimations than people think, and that an oversized skimmer will actually perform worse because it's designed to process a higher input of food than it's actually getting. Now I've always oversized my skimmers, and I chose to go nuts on this tank because I plan to have a high bio load of fish and to eventually feed fairly heavily. When I first set up the tank, my only other filtration was the Red Sea filter socks that I never bothered changing, and an algae reactor that didn't ever take off. And the skimmer did an absolutely fantastic job. For about the first year, phosphate never went above 0.04, and nitrate never went above 4 parts per million, which is more or less perfect. The skimmer cup was always full of really thick, dark skimmate too, so there's no doubt it was doing a fantastic job. After that, I then added an auto filter roller and switched to a proper algae bed. And while the skimmer continued to do well, in the months before I sold it, performance had started to drop. 
I was getting much less skin ache than before, and it wasn't as dark. I was also finding it increasingly difficult to tune. It would go days bubbling too low and not producing any skimmate, or bubbling too high and filling the skimmer cup with water. So I'd try raising or lowering the skimmer itself, fine tuning the water inlet and air inlet, but none of that worked. I gave it a thorough clean and started again, but I just couldn't get it back to its former glories. So after watching several of the BRS videos, I decided that what they were saying made a lot of sense, so that's what tipped me over the edge to downsizing. Based on my personal experiences though, and having spent hours looking at my favourite tanks on forums, I still think oversizing is the way to go, which is why I went for a 600 litre skimmer on my 400 litre tank, and why I also thought long and hard about getting the 1000 litre version, a decision I may come to regret. The other big reason for me to downsize was noise. The NIOS 220 comes with a large AC pump, and while it ran quietly at first, that changed over time, and I found I could hear a buzz in my living room, which was louder than any of my other tank equipment. A smaller pump is always likely to be quieter, but that's not the whole story. And that leads into my other reasons, which don't strictly relate to downsizing. The first of which is features. One of the features I gained in the process of changing skimmers was a DC pump. The two main benefits of DC pumps are that they are quieter and they're adjustable. And while the DC skimmer I bought, a Deltec 600i, isn't silent, it's much quieter than the NIOS was. It's also quieter than my return pump and the fans on my lights, all of which means I can no longer hear it outside of the sump. And I can't tell you how much more relaxing it is not having an incessant buzz coming from your tank. The adjustability of the DC pump also really appealed to me. And when the NIOS was either overflowing or under skimming, I always wished I could just turn the pump up or down slightly, rather than tearing my hair out, metaphorically of course, and playing around with the skimmer height and water and air adjusters. And that leads into the final reason, which is ease of tuning. I'm sure I'm not alone in finding it difficult to tune skimmers, you can watch as many videos as you like, but sometimes nothing will work. The NIOS has the usual water level and air adjusters, but once I started having problems, I could never seem to get the mix right and my research led me to the new Deltec skimmers. They have a water level tube that shows you clearly how much difference it makes when you turn the water level adjuster. And it's amazing how much difference a fraction of a turn will make, something I didn't properly appreciate with a NIOS. That lets you set the level at which your foam forms much more easily. The instruction manual also gives really clear guidance on exactly what you need to do to set the skimmer up, something other skimmer manufacturers should take note of. If you want to see my initial impressions of the Deltec, I'll put a card at the top of the screen. In summary then, the main reasons I downsized my skimmer were the precious extra space it created in the sump, and that I was sucked in by BRS TV videos on the subject of performance. It remains to be seen whether a smaller skimmer will actually perform better in my tank, but I have no shortage of other filtration, so I'm not anticipating any issues with high nitrates anytime soon. And it's the subject of whether or not you should oversize skimmers that I'd love to hear from you guys on. Despite what BRS say, I still think it's better to oversize skimmers by between 50 and 100%. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section below, and let me know what size your tank is, and what size your skimmer is rated for.